Hello guys and welcome back to the Virtual Developers Conference 2020. We are almost uh, in a few seconds, 1500 hours motion time. And uh, I'm going to hand over to our to my co-host Girish, who is going to give us some details about the next presentation. Girish, to you now. Yeah. Okay, so we as as informed earlier, we are now going to have a presentation by two guys. Ramlokan Akshay and Pravish Babaji, who works at the SD Work. Ram Akshay is actually the service delivery manager at SD Work, and uh, Pravish Babaji is a software developer at SD Work. We also uh, use this opportunity to thank SD Work for their sponsorship uh, to our event. Okay, so yeah, Akshay and Pravish will be talking about mood recognition with machine learning. I will hand it to them and let them start. Thanks, host. Thanks, guys. Um, good evening. Maybe we can just start. Uh, today, uh, together with Avish, I'll be uh, showing to you the mood recognition with uh, machine learning that we made. Can you just move to the agenda for me, please? Yeah. And for today, um, we have first the evolution of AI just to find out uh, what we did with AI since ages now. The, con the concept behind machine learning and the building blocks behind what's a data model, the coding part that our code monkey will demo to you. And finally, the, the emotion recognition demo itself with the seven um, different modes that we have developed. Can you just next for me? First, we'll just start with the evolution of AI. You have two aspects of it. <clears throat> you have the concept of uh, the data accuracy itself, where over time, how it has uh, improved. The first one. Um, the first one is about <clears throat> the rea uh, reaction upon action. The, the first concept was developed in 1950, where we first got um, the first aspect of it, where, for example, every action that we you put forward, there was a proper reaction to it. That was the native one. And then earlier at a later phase, next one, please. Uh, at a later phase, what we also saw, saw about 40% in terms of data accuracy, it was a mixture about uh, with um, the actual, if I can say, uh, reaction and action and reaction, and also history bits and pieces of historical data. The first one was uh, about 2000, an AI concept where it was uh, with the company Sony that they first developed the first humanoid. Next one. Then in 2000, um, early 2000, there was the introduction of smart application with about 50 percent of uh, of accuracy where there was a decision uh, based on data trend and also average and then we later saw that uh, this further developed with the con with 2010 with the concept uh, of apple where they first embedded the first type of ai um, within their within their iphone with virtual assistant like siri and that was a bit a bit of a change because there was also another aspect of it, the data scientist. Today, um, previously it was only based upon the historical data and trend. And now something that was interesting, it was also um, the came up of the model where the data scientist was like um, preparing the, the various data and feed it in the model to just uh, have the AI more accurate. And now it's, uh, it's speaking about 85%. Next, please, for me. And the concept in 2014 was the introduction of AI by Alexa, by Amazon, where they were leveraging um, about data accuracy, precision, trending. And the now the precision about was about 85%, that we really saw a big change in the pattern where uh, AI was really assisting us based on our uh, based on our trend preferences to enable us make uh, shopping. Uh, one example was Alexa on Amazon, and the latest one. Next, please. And for the next one, 
for the next one, um, it was it's the new one. Which actually, with uh, 90 90 percent of accuracy, where there was the most powerful uh, model that we can see today, where AI is all run around us within that small application. You have it in, within various fields like medical field, aeronautic. Um, just name it. AI is there now. That was uh, for the evolution of AI. Something which is quite interesting here, you see that over the over the time, the the chances chances for error has diminished, and that's what we are aiming today with the with the evolution of AI. We we'll just change a bit about uh, what's the the trend that was. There's, I already talked about AI, and uh, the introduction was about machine learning. How you put that both of them all together, AI and machine learning today. We'll just talk about uh, first of all artificial intelligence, the AI itself. Uh, the concept of AI is quite simple. It's just mimicking the human brain uh, to into machine, so that uh, it can enable the the machine at the end of the day to make act actions or even take decisions. And under part of it comes the machine learning, which we are going to go into more details today. The concept of um, machine learning is the ability of if you want, uh, enable the machine, the machine to really learn and improve based on their experience upon the model, the data that we train them. It's just like uh, a baby. The further that you you train him or her, uh, he or she is able to just make proper decision and learn as he, well, as he he develops in a child, uh, it goes on teenager and then adults. It's the same concept. Then the the other concept that uh, we also have within the age AI family is the deep learning. Next, please. <clears throat> the concept of deep learning is, uh, furthermore, is the ability about um, mostly towards AI itself, machine learning, but uh, some steps further, it's actually training the model to learn out of it, uh, out of these um, learning curves, if you want, and make proper decision over stuffs. We'll just get stick to uh, machine learning, as, as I told you um, earlier, and then, and then we'll just shift um, about how the machine machine itself can differentiate between various objects. Next, please. Today, we'll take just a small example, a pen, a pen, a pen and a pencil. How can you differentiate actually between uh, these two? These are called the features, the concept of a feature. And one feature for the pen is that it uses ink, and another feature of the pencil is uh, it uses graphite. And similarly, the data scientist here brings um, a big change in the modeling, is that they plot this feature, they, they plot that they different, the various differences and enable our model to make proper decisions. Um, you'll see in the, in the graph uh, on the right-hand side, you'll see that uh, the red right side is the pen and the blue side is the pencil. And even even uh, if there's a proper tray, uh, if you want, in between them, there are some pencil that uh, a bit uh, resemble the pen and uh, vice versa. This is uh, this this um, part. Uh, it's the data scientist who will really analyze it and then build the proper model to to really train uh, our, if you want, um, the the machine. Uh, um, behind to really uh, make proper decision. That's that's the aspect of the feature. Now I'll just uh, evolve uh, the presentation to talk a bit about uh, the concept. Next, please. Yeah. <clears throat> Today, there's um, before talking uh, really into bringing you into more details about the the concept itself. Let's talk about the approach. There's two types of approach today. There's the traditional approach where uh, today, traditionally what we are, we were currently doing is that we were, for example, coding, building the rules and also uh, pushing the data to uh, the system. And at the end, we get the answers, which was pure if you want action and reaction. And this model has changed over time uh, to bring the machine learning approach. 
Within the machine learning approach, um, you see that um, today the, the concept has changed. You're, bring, you're pushing the answers to the machine, the, the concept, the model, and also you have the data that goes with it. Similar like how today a child will be learning. Uh, for example, he will each time ask you, why is it like that? Why, 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 and why? And you push it, we push uh, the child with answers. And also when, for example, there's a new data, when he sees, for example, a pen or a pencil, he's now able to define what's the set of rules to, to really differentiate between these two. And that's the new approach. Now we'll see why we have bring the new concept, the new machine learning approach. Next, please. Uh, the, the approach is quite simple, I must say. Why it, we bring that uh, forward is that uh, one simple thing is that the more rules that you put is, um, is more logic. And the more logic brings in more line of code. And that's the simple reason behind what we, why we move from the traditional approach to uh, the new approach towards matching. And let's now um, get to the concept part. Next, please. And drill down a bit more towards about uh, what we have done uh, within mood recognition itself. Let's take two different aspects, two different moods. On the mother screen, you can see there's that one happy face and one uh, neutral face. How do I differentiate between the happy face and the neutral face? It's, it's again, uh, all the aspect of data. Can you just move for me, please? Sorry. <clears throat> there's the... Um, there's the concept of uh, first um, something which is obvious. When you take, for example, the picture from what um, what I took uh, earlier, the example within the slide, you see that the picture was um, in colored, was colored. The first thing that you really need to do for the mood recognition part is to bring down, um, if you want, all the various distortion. We'll just pass uh, pass on it like a filter to bring the image in black and white for a faster processing, of course, and also remove like shadow distortion on the image itself. And the other, con the other accept, um, concept behind is uh, converting that particular image to a binary. It's uh, at, at the end. The way that our model will be trained, uh, the way that you inject uh, data to our model so that it can learn out of it. Once you have the once you have the concept of the binary, then you can plug it in the in the model to at a later phase um, bring in the feed the data if you want the the model data set. That's what uh, what we call the the model the data set. Uh, actually, it's uh, the the training behind the learning um, out of the binary data that you push to the model uh, just for the for example the machine learning concept that we we put forward to make the proper decisions. Now I just pass on uh, to Favish that will uh, be covering the building blocks part and also the demo. Over to you, Favish. Um, thank you, Akshay, for this uh, great introduction to what we um, try to do. So taking in tune with what actually just mentioned, the um, traditional approach versus the new approach with machine learning. So um, if we had to code the application that we would be able to differentiate between two or more different types of um, emotions from a picture. So uh, I guess in, in general, it would have, we'd have to just pull in an image from the webcam and uh, look it look in at the content and uh, try to, how would you tell like uh, what emotion is actually uh, being displayed on the, on, the, um, on the photographs. So it would be very, very complicated to firstly code this part and uh, to take into consideration all the um, different types of skin tone or different types of face faces or pertaining to the genders, the age. So you know it, it would be a very a lengthy piece of code to be able to to be able to create such an application using the traditional method. So uh, what we try to do um, 
was actually broken down into two different parts. The first being the training part and the uh, using part, which is basically the inference phase. So uh, like I just said, the traditional model, it would be a very long piece of code. We were able to do this with just 50 lines of code in machine learning. So taking in mind all the diverse shapes, skin tones, and uh, sizes of the faces, we um, we created a data set containing around 33,000 images that were stored in their binary format. So this is how this is the data that the model actually takes in uh, to be able to learn the different types of faces and what emotions that they are displaying. So um, I'm moving to the next slide. Um, so this is the inference phase, like I just mentioned. The, the main phase of the application is the training part. But when we actually consume the model, so when we pass in the data that we want through the model, uh, the model will be able to um, give us a prediction on what it thinks uh, the, the picture is displaying. So I just take a step back and go back to the training phase. So as you can see on the screen on the top uh, left, there is a snapshot of our data set. So here we can see just 12 lines. We have around 33,000 images that are stored in their pixel format. And with the first column, uh, displaying the emotions, so we have zero to six. With each uh, each binary number maps to one type of emotion, and these emotions are taken from the FSCS system developed by Dr. Paul Ekman, who states that there are seven fundamental um, human emotions. So this is a bit on our data set, and we used the traditional approach of splitting our data set between eighty to 20% to train the model and the 20% to test the model. The images are, of course, stored in binary. They are pre-processed grayscale images, so, um, so which is better for the, the model to actually learn about it. So I'm saying model a lot. So the model is actually the neural net uh, behind the whole system. Um, we used a three-layered convolutional neural net to, to, to go through our training process. Um, so I just uh, skip a bit to our demo and show some code uh, to, to go through it. So just let me um, bring in my ID. Okay, so I'm using the Jupyter Lab. Let's take a look at the data set once again. So um, this is a CSV file where we stored all 33,000 of our images. So the images, like I mentioned, represent the various emotions that are labeled in the uh, first column. So zero, it's angry, one, it's happy, two, it's sad, and so on until six. They are mapped according to the standard set by Dr. Paul Ekman. So each of these emotions, is each of these images are map to the emotion accordingly and this is where we, we use it in our training in our training part so um, I created a, a free layered multi uh, free layered neural net with um, each convolution um, taken in the image layer by layer so um, I run the code on 100 epochs. So what one epoch means is that each uh, image goes through all the neural leaks one time. So with 100 epochs, it, it went back and forth 100 times individually. So when you times that, when you multiply that to the 33,000 images and the three layered uh, neural net, so it's quite a lot. So there's, there's a lot of training that took place and this is actually what had us uh, obtain a very good accuracy so the accuracy we were able to get to was around 79.8 uh, percent i have a small snapshot of the of the accuracy um okay so yeah at around 100 epoch uh the accuracy was the test accuracy was around 79.8 percent and the train accuracy was 99.2 uh, percent uh, this uh, this balance is not actually a big deal uh, so what it means is the data set that the image was trained on 
if we use the same image to test the, the model, it would return 99.2% accurate all the time. But if we use another image that the data set actually was not exposed to, the accuracy would be much lower. So it's around 79.8%. For us, this was actually um, a reasonable accuracy. You know, eight out of nine, uh, eight out of 10 times. So we were able to display the, the application well, the result well. So um, this is the first part of our application, the training part where we train the model and we store the information somewhere. But now we have to use the, the model that we created. So this goes into the testing part where uh, we feed in an image that was not, uh, well, but we didn't put in the data set and we try to see if the model was able to, to pick up on on what emotion is being displayed. So um, is this, I'm not sure if you guys can see the code actually. Okay. So as I said earlier, the, um, the data set was stored into uh, zero to six for each emotion. So uh, the the model has no way of knowing which emotion it is. So here we we class the different uh, emotion into separate classes. So as you can see, we have seven different objects. So pertaining to each uh, matching number, it will be able to map the difference, the, the similarity to the emotions that we create. So this has to be exactly the same as we created in our data set to be able to get an accurate enough result. So um, here we are loading the model. The, the model is stored in an H, uh, H5DF file because um, we can't actually see it. So we have to load it through with Keras processing to be able to use it. So I'll just um, run it real quick. Okay, so as soon as I run it, there's a small tick into GUI that I created quickly to, to to be able to browse through a file. So I just uh, browse a file and this is something, this is my face, so I'll just use that uh, to try and see if there's an accuracy. Okay, so it's almost instantly, uh, I'm able to get, uh, well, if we all agree that I did happen in the picture, so I'm able to get a very good accuracy for the emotion that is being displayed in the picture, but we can also see there is a small uh, similarity, there is a small index for each of the other emotions, but because uh, we do not actually have a 100% accuracy and the application is actually not telling us, okay, this is a happy picture, it's merely making a prediction on what we actually taught him or to the model during the training process. So this is uh, what's actually going on. So I just do it for another picture and um, again, choose another one. So, this, yeah, so again, it's the same result. So the person is visibly angry. So the emotion um, is significantly higher in the anger column and there's a small percentage for all of the other um, emotions, but uh, we do have a very good accuracy for the model. And uh, if, you can, if you guys can see how fast the processing actually is, it's almost instantaneous and simultaneous. We'll get to the simultaneous in pause. I'll just do another demo real quick with another image. Um, image. Yes, so again, this is uh, the person is is happy and the emotion is is accurately displayed. Um, I have to be honest, but there are some if images that it won't work on so because the 80% accuracy uh, to be able to get, uh, I guess, a better accuracy. Uh, we did some tests uh, in this uh, in this context and we found that the the key to getting a better accuracy is actually to just uh, reduce the number of clashes that we have, you know, because the model is trying to learn several different emotions and with such a large chunk of data, it's, uh, the data is getting overfitted. So that's why um, with this kind of um, uh, processing and all of this is being done on a laptop, uh, it's actually the best we can, we could have achieved unless we reduce the emotions or uh, use a better data set. So 
remember I said uh, simultaneous, we also applied the same model that we created on uh, a live uh, a live video processing feed. So uh, I just try to switch on to the other code and turn on my uh, use my webcam to actually try and display this model live. So uh, again, it's the same same uh, concept. It's the same um, same model, same training training set, everything. It's just that we created a layer of video processing on top of the model to be able to see the emotions in in. Uh, in accuracy. Okay, so I think I have to turn off my camera, my webcam camera, and use the the um, the uh, allow the application to use the the webcam over there. I just turn off my camera real quick. Well, actually, um, out of the window you want to. No, actually, I want to turn off my camera for Skype so I can use my camera on, on the application. Okay, so okay, so I think you guys can see the, the, the camera. Okay, so I'll explain real quick what we, we try to do here. Uh, because of we wanted to keep the, the accuracy good and have a seamless processing uh, in simultaneous with with the, with the input video, we had to reduce the um, the number of clauses in our data set. So we took it down to just happy and angry, and we created another model to train the data set and to use the 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 output on this on this type of application because to process the video and show the result almost immediately but took a lot of firepower and all of this has been done on a laptop so as you can see i'll just come closer to the camera and smile maybe and it will be it will show that i am happy i can't i'm not sure if this is doing that okay so out it's of, happy out of, yes. out of curiosity can you make yes. an angry face and <laughs> yes <laughs> so it's, it's, it's it's angry it's angry <laughs> Okay, can you make your normal face? <laughs> well, my normal face is happy, <laughs> but kind of funny. Uh, would you agree with me, actually? His angry face is kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> but that, because I'm not usually angry, but you know, um, well, I can. I, I think it's working. Do you agree with me, actually, with my happy, angry face? Yeah. <laughs> so um, this is actually what we try to do. Okay, I, nice to hear you. Go on, guys. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so, um, if you wanted to extend this to all of the seven different clauses, it could have been done, but we would have needed a better or more firepower to process this simultaneously. Uh, there was another option to just uh, process a video feed afterwards, that would have been the same as the uh, image processing, but we wanted to do it live, which is, I think, you'd agree better a better application of this model that we created and I guess uh, it's it's something that we are very proud of um, and I'll switch back to, to the slides because I guess I am I'm done with the demo here okay so okay so my slide just I just quit um, so that was, I guess, the demo. It was a very short demo. We tried to keep it very light, you know, to be able to explain what we did. And um, this is something that we have been working on for quite some time, uh, I guess, since last year. Okay, if mm -hmm. you agree, yeah. yes, it's something that we lost. We worked for nearly a year, and we obviously used the application to build other, other more interesting layer on top of it like we we explored the idea of doing a, a iot uh iot layer to, to display uh let's say different types of light depending on your mood simultaneous or even a created music playlist that depends on what you're feeling out uh, what you're feeling so this is a, there are different types of application what what we looked into and for us the core of the application was the training part which was done very i guess it was done good in my opinion and i guess actually agrees too and this is something that 
uh, we we took it further. We published research papers on this uh, this type of this research that we created, and it's basically very easy. Like I mentioned earlier, it's just 15 lines of code uh, for the for the usage of the part. The training part is actually the hardest part, where you have to create your data set. You have to to meticulously write each line of uh, lay a line of code for your layer that was the i guess the hard part but once that was done we we had a lot of fun ideas to use the model we should be the live simultaneous uh, processing so i think uh, that's all for from my side maybe Akshay maybe would we like can to take type. the questions now maybe yeah, we maybe can Akshay. take the questions okay yes okay um uh, Pavish, could you, uh, you you can enable your camera now? I'm gonna switch you on uh, a different mode, and then uh, yes, we do have a question. We have one question from Christopher, and uh, wait, I'm gonna just uh, switch the uh, the scene here so that we have everybody on screen. All right, yes, uh, the question from uh, from Christopher Girish, can you ask the question from the live yes. stream? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this question is, what is the algorithm being used for the artificial intelligence? Uh, it's a convolutional neural net. Okay. He has another question. According to you, what is the future of AI? This is interesting. Go on, guys. <laughs> the question is more suited to you, actually, since you, you spoke about the evolution at the beginning. Yeah, as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's it's already here because we already see that, for example, that today the AI is is uh, like enabling us, aiding us towards decision. And for the future, I I see it like uh, even in the medical because I'm more like um, doing quite some research in the medical fields also. With the medical uh, in the within the medical fields, if I can take a, a, a simple example, is for example today we have the deep plans. Um, that is currently uh, while doing a surgery, um, th th there's a like a camera um, plug on top of the surgery where, for example, if for example someone is like having like various tumors and live, you can, for example, the AI will interpret if you want um, the various cell and then deep dive give you more de in terms of details. Like like it's similar like that application. Uh, I see the future of AI is like really enabling us to make proper decision faster for the for the humankind. Oh, of course, you it's it's a matter of having a knife. Either you use it to kill someone or you use it to to make a food for for all the population. And it's the same approach here. And if you see the good use of AI, for sure you can foresee situation and even in, in automatic code, uh, you can see, for example, for sure, we are still not there. Uh, we still have like rooms for improvement, but we are reaching at some point of time where we have less errors and uh, they are able to predict better the the results and also enable us to make better decisions at the end. Uh, well, Christopher has to agree with us. He asked the question. <laughs> So I think, uh, guys, I must congratulate you both that uh, you respected the time and within, let's say, 30 minutes, you were able to cover quite a lot of information, uh, including a very nice demo. That was a very nice touch about with uh, the angry face and the happy face. So uh, Girish, any comments from your side? Yes, I would, I would like if uh, the, the other speakers on uh, on uh, the future of AI. Um, you know, Akshay is my manager. I cannot actually disagree with him. So I just say <laughs> hey, whatever on. he said. It's, we are free, it's, you're it's, free to talk. <laughs> it's it's okay for me. Well, I mean, um, if we if you look at uh, the IT industry, maybe five years ago, I was still in college, so I can't I can't say much, but. <laughs> We can see the evolution of how we are going forward. Like I worked on this last year, and the year before that, if you ask me to maybe explain one tiny part of what I did, it won't be possible to do that. The the, the not interesting thing about AI is constantly evolving, it's constantly changing. So today I was able to create an application that can detect emotions from a live uh, photograph or video whatever it may so tomorrow we, we can't actually know what 
what's going to be happen happening because of the vast majority of what AI can do, like Akshay mentioned with the old, with the medical applications, it doesn't have to, to be limited to that. We can look at how any business is functioning today and see how many things we can actually replace with AI. Even here at SDWorks, um, we have... It's, it's not about replacing, uh, if I can say. It's, yeah, it's I... about like uh, enabling us, like doing, but, um, if you want additional, uh, more, um stuff that will add value to the business and yeah to yeah. complement uh human because ai i don't think will re actually replace uh people but it will uh they will they owe it it, it that's uh, why i said i can't disagree with him today so. yeah but the concept is mostly about uh for the AI, how I see it, it's enabling people, aiding people to make proper decision and also concentrate about um, about doing like the right stuff. Well, I just hope that in 50 years, uh, my manager is not a human, so maybe <laughs> we'll see if you're still here. <laughs> I, I, I would agree. I would agree with what Akshay said that, uh, you know, if, even when we look at uh, uh, let's say three, four, or even five decades before, with the advent of computers and more powerful computers, there was this constant fear that computers would replace humans one day. You know, there won't be jobs. But today, all of you guys are in cyber, in the urban cyber city, thanks to computers. So if we go back to our, you know, our parents and uh, maybe grandparents, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of them thought that computers would replace a lot of jobs. But in fact, what it did, it enhanced the jobs and uh, there were new kind of, of, of jobs on the market. So based on that, I agree with, uh, with the explanation that actually I just gave. And uh, Girish, I see that we have another question. Would you like to pick it up? Yeah, it's, uh, so it's from Adit. How much data was used for training? I think it was for your uh, simulation. How much data was actually used? Yes, so our data set was composed of um, 33, 863,000 uh, images, I think. The split was done 80 to 20. So I have to look at the calculator and calculate the 80% of 33,000 images. So it was roughly around um, uh, 28,000 images. So these are images that are not stored in JPEG format or PNG. They are stored in their raw binary format. So it was easier, I guess, to create. Uh, not easier for me because I had to individually store each of the, of the um, images in the data set uh, in the binary. and make sure that they are actually matching to the emotions that I created, that I, read, uh, that I wrote in the first column where the emotions are being displayed zero to six. So there's 33,000, so you can imagine how much time it took, but I, I'd say it was, it was very much worth it because once I got a very good accuracy, 80%, so there the, the possibilities open up where we could have, we, where we can still use it to create much, many, many more things with this as a foundation. Yeah, that does sound like a very meticulous work. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, yeah, just, I guess it was mostly. Different. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, it was mostly. Yeah, it was mostly just, it was mostly trial and error to be, to be frank with you. Like the first time after training for maybe uh, on my laptop, it took uh, two days full, 20, 48 hours, like the laptop was running uh, on itself. And the first time it returned maybe like 20% accuracy. So I had to just, to just fine tune the parameters and try again and again and again until it actually got to 80%. So what was a year in the mm. making, uh, so, you know, uh, it was actually part of my dissertation at the University of Technology, and we took it further and brought it here today. And we plan to take it further than this to be able to use it in a way that we can actually, uh, I guess, present it as a product maybe someday. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me uh, uh, ask the question for the live session that you did. Will Will the camera be able to read two percent faced? Maybe that would uh, need uh, more power, right? Yes, it would need mobile. We can actually use two faces, but then I had to distort the quality of the video to be able to fit in both faces to be processed at the same time. But it's definitely doable with a better laptop or better uh, GPU or whatever processing power I need. We have another question. I think it's yeah, okay. Maybe our last question by Deep Deep Sheeter. 
how much is AI trustworthy to do surgeries compared to doctors in the medical field? I think Akshay would like to take this one. Oh, uh, yeah. I, th I think that's why I also mentioned about aiding um, the doctors towards decision. It's not actually doing uh, the, the surgery, um, the AI, the robot won't be doing doing the surgery itself. It's rather, for example, if there's a decision, for example, something uh, quite simple, it, let's say you have virus scanning and they have learned out of like uh, maybe about 1 million scan and then taking the proper decision. And, and when, for example, for a patient A, you want to have like the AI um, respond from it, from the medical, uh, if you want document, you just inject it, and then you have the proper outcome. And based also on the on the medical person's uh, experience and also the AI, and then compare and mismatch uh, result. If there's a mismatch in the result, then go deeper if you want. It's not really about replacing the the surgery or replacing the doctor. It's about aiding them. It's actually how I see it. Okay. So yeah, it's, I think this session of a great was a great success. We also see how much work these guys put in to bring us a, such a great session. So I guess, yeah, it was a really nice one. We got interaction from our chat, from our YouTube viewers, yeah. So what are your thoughts? My thoughts, uh, I concur with what you guys, uh, what you just said, uh, a very nice presentation, very nice demo and uh, very good interaction with uh, our viewers. Thank you guys, thank you Pavish, thank you Akshay, thank you. and uh, we just thank hope you. that uh, uh, for in the next time we get to do, uh, you guys get to do a presentation in much better circumstances, not during a pandemic and uh, uh, in a physical place uh, where we can interact uh, in a better way. Thank you very much once again.